Oh my goodness me, the madness is coming back! The madness is coming back! Oh, the red back is coming from bite to leg! Oh, it's happening! This is day three! Day three, it's all happening here! And Warning, this video contains graphic images of deadly spiders and a very large and menacing praying mantis. The video contains scenes that some viewers may find distressing, so if you're triggered by seeing the way nature plays out, this video is not for you. Oh yeah, this is round three, ding ding ding, of the most amazing monster bug battle you're ever gonna see. Between the deadly Australian Ridback Spider and the giant green Praying Mantis, which is the most awesome predator insect in the world. Back on day one, the Redback Spider got a sneaky bite into the front claw of the Praying Mantis. It somehow came back from near death to fight on in day two. And on day two, the Mantis put up an incredible fight. It had plenty of opportunities to knock out the Redback Spider. But again, it was affected by Venom. It laid down in the tank between day two to day three. And the time-lapse footage that I captured of the Mantis in what I thought was its death throes shows the Mantis was regurgitating a brown fluid. Surely the Mantis is starting to be broken down by the Spider's Venom. But somehow, by an incredible Mantis miracle, this Mantis is back up and fighting for a third day. If this Mantis can shrug off the effects of the Spider's Venom into the third day, can it muster its powers and focus on grabbing that Redback Spider and taking it out? Put it this way, the Mantis is one good snatch away and that Redback Spider is good night, sister. Well, the Redback uh, versus Prey Mantis, uh, the saga isn't over yet. This is, uh, well, basically the third day after that Prey Mantis there got a bit of a stinger from the Redback. So as you can see, uh, the Redback Spot has set up home, and miraculously, and I don't understand why, but the Praying Mantis is actually still alive. Let me just um, pull open the lid here, and I'll show you. I'll just give the Mantis a bit of a touch here. There must be something that the Mantis has got that can fight off the venom of the Redback. I mean, this just opens up a whole bunch of questions, if you ask me. It is still very drunk, in a sense. Um, it doesn't seem to have its legs, but for the fact that it hasn't passed away... Um, really has me thinking what's going on here uh, and why hasn't the Redback come down and bound this Mantis up? I think I understand why because I think the Redback uh, still sees this critter as a, a major threat. I did put a time-lapse camera uh, on the Mantis and it has uh, basically speared up brown stuff. I thought it was going to die, uh, well basically a well, day back. <laughs> Uh, but as you can see, it's alive and kicking, but I don't think it's, that it's its full health, if that makes any sense. Like, it doesn't really want to get up onto branches and stuff. Um, maybe the best way I could say it is, it's like it's um, not coordinated uh, in the way it should be. So I dare say, uh, the venom that is into this mantis uh, is, is really stopping it from being able to, well, take out the red back. Like there's moments here where you can see the mantis is like it's back to full strength. There's something that happens where it seems to, um, you know, fight off the venom. You know, this video really starts to, uh, well, basically ask a lot of questions about what's going on here. How can this critter uh, survive such an onslaught from the redback spider? Look at that, it's grabbing the tweezers there. I just can't believe uh, that the praying mantis is still alive, uh, considering what happened to it in the last couple of days. Now, in a funny way, for the fact that I haven't really seen Mrs. Redback there uh, bind the mantis up, I'm almost going to call it a draw. Uh, sure, I haven't seen the mantis uh, grab the Redback like they do with their claws at the front there and basically devour it, uh, which is sort of puzzling as well, but, um, you know, it is amazing that the mantis is still up and running. I'm sure if the mantis could coordinate itself to be up on the twig here, it could possibly have a fighting chance at getting the red back. But one thing I've noticed about the mantis is it hasn't really done its, well, the way they stand before they attack something. See, it uses those front claws to grab onto things. It needs those free if it's going to attack the red back. I think the term I'll use is the mantis is basically punch drunk from the venom or the bites that it got from the red back. What I've noticed is that it'll preoccupy its front claws there with grabbing onto things instead of getting into its attack mode and taking out the red back. I, you know, it, it has had plenty of opportunity in that first day uh, to be pr quite proactive in a kill, uh, but it didn't do it. And I think, uh, you know, that left it vulnerable. As soon as the red back had the opportunity to nail one of the legs, one of the rear legs, um, 
we find Mrs. Prime Manus, uh, well, she hasn't died, but then again, she hasn't really claimed the Redback, has she? What speaks volumes to me is the fact that the Redback has just did well clear of the Manus while it was in trouble at the bottom of this enclosure here. Uh, yeah, it's like both critters have got a lot of respect for each other. That's the one thing I've noticed uh, over the three days. Those brown stains there is uh, what the uh, mantis spewed up. I really thought it was all over when I saw that going on. And I'm pretty sure the mantis has still got that killer instinct, even though it's uh, very, very wounded uh, from previous bites. Um, the redback, you know, teases it in a sense, uh, goes down near it, and I'm sure the insect uh, instinct in the mantis is to basically grab that redback for a meal. It's quite crazy to watch. It's like the mantis uh, thinks it can, but it just doesn't do it. Um, it must be in all sorts of stress considering what it's been through in the last two days. And again, I'm seeing that redback um, in the prime position there. See, the claw of the mantis is caught up in trying to hold itself. That's been uh, one of the problems since it's uh, been weakened from that first day. This is another one of those moments where there's like a stalemate, um, they're sort of facing off each other, but uh, I think uh, I think the Redback's really got an advantage for the fact that Manus is uh, not at full strength. That's uh, quite dangerous because uh, Mrs. Manus has got both of her um, latching, clutching claws free, and, she, and look at that, the Redback's spotting the stick again. Um, that was sort of like the downfall on day one for the fact that Manus got his foot stuck on the stick. And it really changed the game uh, to the Manus's disadvantage. Oh, the Manus has um, sprung to life there. It seems to be quite aware all of a sudden. But like, you know, it seems to be punch drunk. That's the best way I could describe it. It just doesn't have its senses to it. It's um, a terrible... Oh, look at it now. I mean, look at that. It, it seems to want to... It knows the red back's there, but it just can't get its act together to to get a strike. It must be extremely saddening uh, if you're a Mantis fan. I mean, who knows it? Oh my goodness me! The Mantis is coming back! The Mantis is coming back! Oh, the red back is coming from bite to leg! Oh, it's happening! This is day three! Day three, it's all happening here! And the red back is coming in and decisive, probably a decisive bite there. Another bite to the Mantis. Oh, it just happened so hard and fast, and the Mantis is, um, day three, it is still fighting on. And again, the red back's gonna have an advantage. It's at the back of the mantis there. There's a leg dangling there. Whether it got a bite in the activity, uh, it's one of those video replay moments. It's, oh no, there's a leg there. It can come in for an easy bite if it wants. Uh, I just, it's, it's unbelievable. You mean you go online, you read, do, yeah, go and Google, uh, do praying mantises, or what kills praying mantises, Google that, and what you'll find is that basically at the top of the food chain of these sort of critters, and the red back there is, um, again in command, oh, it's unbelievable. Oh, that was a bite into the leg then, a bite into the leg, I'd say, uh, the mantises reacted severely. <laughs> And again, the red back is on the stick there. It has spotted its web again, mind you. I think for the fact the Mantis is so weakened on... It's the third day of fighting going on here. I mean, you've got to give it to the red back, but you just don't know which way it's going to swing. And you sort of think uh, in that position, oh, the red back is moving forward, moving forward. There's a leg there. It can come in for a bite. It's got a perfect opportunity here, and it will strike. The red back is extremely good at defending its patch. Oh, it's spotting a bit of web there by the looks of it. Oh, 
completely and utterly amazing to watch. And last night I did a whole bunch of reading up about, you know, has anyone else noted a, a, maybe a black widow or a redback spider taking out a large prey mantis? Uh, well, no. Uh, they'll take out little babies all right. Uh, the saying is, if the mantises are smaller than the spiders, the spiders have got advantage. But obviously here, the, this mantis is massive, and we've seen time and time again how the redback uh, takes to the advantage in the fight. It's another one of those timeout moments uh, that these can prolong and go on for a long period of time. Uh, what is at the disadvantage here is the mantis has got its uh, catching claws stuck up there holding itself up. And, and if it's doing that, it can't really uh, latch out of the redback if it's passing by. The redback is in a, well, quite dangerous zone there. Uh, quite dangerous, I'm pretty sure the mantis knows it's about. Oh, the mantis is going to strike the red back. It's this got its uh, legs free. It has got the eyesight in on that red back there. This could be a a strike from the mantis here. But the question is, has the mantis got the strength to pull this off? Uh, day three into this completely epic bug battle. Uh, sadly, the mantis is uh, punch drunk from venom of the red back from the previous days, and the red back spider. Well somehow uh, showing us its fighting spirit. Now the mantis is going quiet again now. If it's been given a bite again, it's going to go into that same phase of uh, inactivity. Uh, this seems to be the vicious cycle that I've been seeing going on in this battle. And the mantis uh, gets itself into all sorts of crazy situations in here, uh, but again, I'm not sure that that's going to be able to catch the redback spider if you're strung up on a bit of twig like that. Oh, the red back is just there, and the mantis must know it's there. But can it do anything uh, when it's in that position? Now, to me, it's not the classic sort of snatching thing that they do. when They're not, they're not like in that position. They're more like they're going to pounce on something. I mean, that mantis is just, uh, just psycho from venom bite. The red back has uh, moved down uh, to what I think is a ridiculous position because it's right near those... Those things that the mantis uses to capture things, the front claws, it's touching, it's touching. Uh, the red back will get a bite in if it can. Uh, the mantis, where's the mantis looking? Can we look at its head here? Well, it's looking up, it's probably just in venom days at the moment. Uh, but I think it's still got that killer instinct built into it. Day three of the fight. Red back is touching, touching, and it's trying to work out what to do. Uh, the red back is not going to give up, but then again, the red back hasn't come in for a meal. That's probably getting quite hungry by now. You do wonder with Critter Instinct exactly what they're thinking of. I see the arm or the front leg of, their, of the Redback is up onto the claw bit of the Mantis there. It's one of those stalemate times. Uh, it can get into lockdown for like 20 minutes where nothing much happens and it looks like we're into one of those moments again. I've just twisted the tank around and here is another view of uh, this stalemate. They have very, very tense moments when it's like this. You just don't know which way it's going to swing. But I can't see it as being an advantage to the Mantis because, to me, that's not a classic Mantis, mantis position for a strike. It seems to be, uh, you know, clinging onto that branch too much, um, trying to save itself when it really should be freeing up those front claws for a strike against the Redback. The red back has just moved on a bit further there. Again, I think it's in a bit more of an advantage versus the mantis at the moment. One problem I see is the mantis has actually got a leg uh, strung up over the, just pulling focus there, over that twig. And I've seen the red back uh, use that to its advantage uh, every time there's been a confrontation. Well, the mantis's uh, mouth or jaw has been doing that for the last three days continually, uh, even when it's been a lot of stress. And if I move down nice and slow here, uh, the red back is just still there, uh, hovering between those claws. Uh, you think that's a bad spot to be, but in a funny way, I think the red back's got the situation at the moment. Oh, I just actually just missed that one. Uh, the red back struck out. Oh, the mass is uh, completely crazy on the ground. That's what I talk about being punch drunk. It just its coordination is just not there. Uh, if it was coordinated, you know, you'd think it'd have a great chance of getting the red back, but it just can't pull it together. It's quite distressing, isn't it, to see the mass in such a state. 
Red back is off the twig and on the ground in a strange way. That's it's, uh, a weak spot for it to be because uh, it hasn't got its web strung out anywhere. The red back really relies on its web system uh, for a bit of help to get a bite in. And uh, that's sort of like being caught between a rock and a hard place for the red back, but it's going to uh, try and scurry away. Always trying to climb the glass. You know, you'd think if uh, Prey Manus uh, reached out with one of those grabbing claws, uh, it could get a victory. Again, the redback is frozen there, right next to the Mantis. You know, it's like they uh, they both have mutual respect. You know, if I was going to say, well, if this is a wrestling match, it would be one of these things that would be a draw. Uh, maybe you'll see it a different way. Uh, oh, look at that touching there. It's almost like they're, uh, they're being perfect opponents. And this, is, I've never seen down on the glass where the red back has been doing this. Mm. You know, I haven't seen it do its webby thing from its backside when it tries to bounce stuff up. You would have thought it would try to bind up those... Wow, look at it now. It's like it's like springing itself ready to do something. It's these moments I just get very, very spooked out by how the redback works. And you can get these frozen moments in this battle that you just don't know which way it's going to swing and it just snaps out of it really fast where there's one critter will tend to just fly away or fall off a branch or something and the red back is acting really really cautiously I think that's the nice word for that you know if it gets a bite into a leg it must know the legs are a spot to strike but I think it's the uh, the amount of caution there from the red back is just remarkable Probably doing some webby stuff there as well. It's just crazy uh, watching the way these two are played out. Completely crazy. It's one of these battles I'm just thinking, wow, I'd love to let you see it all as one thing. Just as giant epic uh, three day. Who knows, it could go on for four days. Oh, look at that there. Touching the mouth of the prey man is death by the red back there. And the redback just watches it pass by and it doesn't take any action. That's uh, just crazy. Redback's coming back for another touch here. You'd think that's like um, playing with the doors of death, doing that. Especially for praying mantis because it's those jaws that are going to be, you know, like a snip off a, a leg of that spider in an instant. But the grabbing um, claws on that mantis, they, they just seem to be t totally uh, uncoordinated since it got that spider bite in the first day look at that you know it's one of these things a the red back it must be eager for a meal all oh, the manises could be making a move here the red back is trying to climb the glass like it tries to do a oh, oh my goodness me the manis has just reached out but uh the red back has scurried away <laughs> Redback has come back and a vengeance here. It's come running back. Almost like, oh, I'm going to face you off. Uh, I'm not going to let you defeat me. And the Manus uh, is looking the Redback right in the eye. They are eye to eye at the moment in the most fearsome look I've ever seen. Uh, but the Manus, I don't think, has any uh, power left in it or coordination. I think what you need to, um, to really be invincible is coordination of those powerful claws and it just doesn't seem to have it. The red back is just right on top, or right next to the Manus's head there. It's got a leg up onto the front there of its claw. I mean, you just don't know what's going to happen. If it gets a, if it, if it gets a bite into the head area there, it'd be good night, sisters, to the Manus. But hey, it has just bounced back from every bite that it's got from what I've seen. Oh, I see a claw of the Manus moving there. You know, this could be one of these crazy battles where they both die. Uh... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised what I've seen going on. Mind you, I think the critter that's made the more mistakes has been the Prey Manus, and it's a bit like two top tennis players. Often uh, it's the mistakes that decide the match. It's unusual footage to see uh, a giant Prey Manus uh, right next to a Redback Spider, and you would think the Redback Spider normally would be a meal in an instant, but look, it hasn't happened like that. Day three into this, it's anyone's battle still. It's another one of those standoffs that can go on for like 10, 20 minutes where just not much happens at all. It's very, very tense. 
And you'd want to be thinking that the Manus would have a plan, although I think the Redback's plan is a little bit more uh, developed from what I've been seeing in the last couple of days. Uh, I, I always say it's the web. It's that web of the red back, which is its uh, its ace card. Uh, I haven't really seen an ace card from the Manus over the three days, and I know many people would have thought this is one of these battles that would have been over in minutes. Uh, but it hasn't happened. Look, I never thought there'd be like a third day of uh, one critter versus another. Well, they've been like this for... Um, you'll be punching up near 15 minutes now. And... Uh, this seems to be one of the very, very common things that's been going on in this battle, a sort of very close standoff. Oh, oh, I don't know what's going on there, uh, but I'll tell you what, I didn't see the Redback make a strike. It was very, very strange. Uh, Mantis, well, didn't take a bite. I'd say Mrs. Uh, Mantis is on day three, copped another bike because she's gone to that crazy quiet mode, uh, the sort of mode that is at the advantage of Mrs. Redback. Oh, it's on again. Oh, they're kissing each other now. Oh, they're kissing. But oh, oh the Mantis wants that spider. The Mantis wants the spider. But it just can't pull its act together to grab it. Oh, it's so sad. So, so sad. The red back is down on the ground on the glass again, coming up near the mantis. It's one of these things you'd think it's going to have to finish completely soon. Mrs. Red back has reappeared and she's again next to the mantis. You'd think uh, she must be considering using her special web to bind this critter up and finish it off. Oh, she's got oh, it's a strike! It's a strike! Oh my goodness me! That was a massive strike from the red back. And it. Oh! Oh, wow. Oh, the Mantis is in a lot of pain. There's some gooby stuff coming from his mouth. That was a massive strike from the Red back on day three. Massive. And the red back is coming up, it's coming up, oh, here it comes again. It's, oh, it's very aggressive at the moment, it's on the mouth area again, it's starting to heat up now. And I've got, well, really, I can't see how the Manus is ever going to come back. If it's been given another fatal bite, when I say fatal, the Manus hasn't died yet. I can only see this going, oh, falling towards red back. Oh, the red back has just fallen back there. They do that like a defensive thing. And it's going to probably come in and get another bite in. I'm pretty sure that was a bite because that uh, man just reacted very violently and there was some gooby from his mouth. And the red back is, uh, once again, it's one of those very, very tense times that can play out for many, many minutes. And uh, you just don't know which way it's going to swing. Again, I'd say the red back is in a huge advantage here. It's feeling out of its uh, f little feet there. And the Manus uh, looks like it's in no position to strike. It's laying on its back. It's got its claws tucked up. It's got one claw around uh, one of its legs, which doesn't help. And it, I dare say it is reeling a lot of spider bite pain. The red back is doing its evil, evil things there. It's probably going to come in for another bite. And we'll probably see a great big jump from the Manus. It hasn't done its strange web thing that it does when it wants to bind stuff up to take total control that's been the amazing thing i think that's been the respect in the sense for the fact that that redback spider has been so fearful of this opponent here's a nice top view looking down from the top of the tank and the redback spider is going to probably come for a bite it's got the advantage here to see a redback spider playing with a giant praying mantis like this uh, oh my goodness that would have been a bite i think that's a bite And the Mantis has bent up in pain there, it's shocking to see. And Redback has actually strung up some web uh, from the bit of stick over there over to the Mantis, so this could be a binding time coming up. 
Her back is moving in uh, close to the mantis's leg there. I can only imagine it's wanting another bite. And it could be another one of those moments where the time stands still for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, you just don't know. I think for the fact that mantis can um, survive all these bites, I mean, that's the part that I want to try and Google and work out. Maybe the audience is going to know some expert about insects will probably explain it to us. Oh, we're starting to see the red back is uh, now crawling on the mantis again. Uh, I don't think I've seen uh, the red back as close as many times in the last two days. It really is starting to take control of the situation. Oh, when it's putting its legs out like that, uh, we're going to probably see a bite. It's right on a leg at the moment. And I'm pretty sure when it inflicts a bite, there's going to be a great big jump from that mantis. It's a horrible thing to watch, but hey, this is nature. As horrible as it looks, uh, this is the way it plays out. Well, there's Red back there, tucked in, uh, sort of up uh, onto one of his legs there, midway along the mantis. And uh, it's one of those, another moment where it's sort of just everything's frozen and not much is going on. Well, there is the Red back on, that's on one of the front forward legs now of the mantis. And you'd think that this is going to be a bite here. Or something like that. It seems to have taken control of the situation. The mantis hasn't done much moving at all. But I'm yet to see the binding of web and con total control that the redbacks can do. I mean, seeing that is telling me that, oh, this is looking very, very evil, isn't it? Oh, just imagine being the mantis. I mean, that's the, the crying aspect to all this. Day three into this battle. And uh, I really, oh, I've said it two days now, I think the mantis is on its last legs, but we've seen it bounce back so many times. And again, the red back is, uh, that's one of the rear legs of this mantis. It seems to be going from leg to leg. Maybe it's going to try and get a bite in, or maybe it's going to start doing its webby thing. It's really starting to look like it's in control. Uh, that's one thing I would say. There was a great big fluster from the praying mantis. You can see it's got his wings out and uh, Mrs. Redback uh, very strangely is, is sitting on top there uh, but there's no movement in her at all. She doesn't look well. I don't know whether she's feeding there or uh, what's going on uh, but it's the sort of position they're in when they're in fear. It's uh, very unusual. Uh, she seems to be as groggy as the praying mantis. I don't know, maybe she's doing bites and things. I don't exactly know what she's up to. Well, there's uh, the wonderful uh, female redback back up on a stick then. Gave me a bit of a fright there. Stick, look at that, putting the web down on the stick. Oh, she did a bit of a poop there on screen. That was rather nice of wasn't it? And as for down on the ground here, well, there's the praying mantis. And again, it is uh, flatten its back. And I think we're going to give the victory to the redback. Well, it's one of these things that could go on for days and days and days. Uh, yes, the mantis is still alive. The redback is in spanking condition, as you can see. Uh, but I think it's proved its point. Um, not everything you read about critters uh, is correct. Sometimes there are anomalies in the way things work out. There's sometimes when you start a video and you put two critters together and you know in your mind, well, of course, the redback spider will be taken by the praying mantis. Uh, praying mantises are amazingly capable at killing spiders. And foolishly, I thought, oh, this will happen in a couple of hours. If I'm really unlucky, it'll drag on for a day. I never expected to be looking at this tank for basically three days. And in fact, and very sadly, it took about five days for the praying mantis to pass away. I did put a time-lapse camera over the tank uh, past this point. Maybe I'll show that right at the end of the video. It's quite tragic to watch. But in the end, uh, I learned a lot of things by watching this battle. There's been many, many comments uh, over the battle videos. Back on day one, there is still the query, did the redback spider get a bite into the prey mantis? For the fact that the prey mantis started to shiver, uh, one person said that mantises will do this shivering as a way of camouflaging, in a sense, looking like a leaf in the breeze. I always thought mantises swayed is one of the things that they did. I really do believe that the redback spider got a bite in. You've got to look at that piece of video from day one very carefully. Remember, the claw section has a bit that goes forward like a leg at the end. And I'm pretty sure the redback's fangs would have been in the right spot. And the way the praying mantis pulled back and retracted from that, to me, says there was a bite. 
And another factor is, it was after that point there where the matter started to act very strange and it was down on the bottom of the tank and it wasn't very well at all. For the fact that the Mantis can spring back for that second day, there was like an eight hour cycle for it to be back on its legs again. It was quite amazing. Uh, maybe it has got some way of flushing out the venom or dealing with the venom from the spider. Maybe it got a very tiny bite. But nevertheless, to see the Mantis bounce back in the way that it did, and it was still determined to get that spider, was quite amazing. And that killer determination really leached across into day three as well. It was terribly drunk with venom by day three. All sorts of crazy things were happening in the nighttime between day two to day three. It was leaking all sorts of fluids from the body. Really horrible stuff, but that's the way spider venom pulls down critters. I do believe it does basically liquefy the insides of critters and then the spider will come down and feed. I think in day three here of the battle, you could see up near the end, the redback spider started to become quite cheeky. It was starting to be not as fearful of the prey mantis as I saw in day one and day two. The redback spider played a fantastic game of patience. Uh, that was one thing that was very notable. On the first day, it didn't do very much at all for a very long period of time. Again, when you watch these videos, it won't feel like that because you would have thought, oh, okay, well, that first bit sort of happened in what seemed like a couple of minutes. But what really happened is, uh, across those couple of minutes that get uploaded to YouTube, uh, you may be looking at time spans of a couple of hours. There were many parts of this battle which were like watching paint dry for me because I'm just sitting next to this tank with a camera and I'm thinking, well, which of these critters is going to make the next move? Unlike a lot of the other people doing critter versus critter videos on YouTube, I'm not in there trying to force the two critters together unnaturally. Remember, it's a very small glass prism, and it doesn't take very much at all for these two critters to come close to each other. I remember seeing one comment from someone, it was on the second battle, I think, I believe it may have been a troll, and they said, oh, it was so unnatural, and, you know, nature doesn't happen like this. <laughs> well, let me give you a little secret about how things work. Um, basically, every nature docker you go and watch, it's in an unnatural environment. I better not say too much more, because I may destroy the illusion. And another little secret fact about a lot of the nature docos that you see these days, there's a lot of CGI fake critters put into them. Hmm, haven't you noticed that since the advent of great CGI, the nature docos have become totally amazing? Once again, I'd hate to shatter the illusion that the film industry likes to prop up when it comes to nature docos. And maybe another thing I should address, and I know there'll be comments like this, and I've already seen these uh, being filtered out of the previous battle, is you'll have people come in and saying, oh, but Leo, this was animal cruelty and you can't have things like this shown on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. I've even had some people lay in comments saying they were offended with what they saw and they've gone straight past the warning that I have at the start of these videos. So they've only got themselves to blame. You know, <laughs> they've gone and clicked on a video which shows a spider or a praying mantis and it's saying bug wars. And they think, oh, I got offended because I saw something kill another thing. I don't understand why people go and click on things and then get offended by what they watch. It was their own actions that got them into the video. I never went to their house and grabbed their hand and made them click on the video. I can assure you that. And another big reality check is, uh, in nature, life is pretty darn cruel. I can assure you. There's no special disability services for critters that are born with problems. There's no aged care for any critters. I can assure you that. In the end, your life is basically part of a food chain. You're only going to become food for something else to live. But it seems that there are so many people who struggle with this simple idea that that's the way nature plays. And really, if I went out to my backyard and maybe just pegged out a couple of square metres and started to study what went on in that couple of square metres over a couple of months, the amount of death and carnage in nature that would have gone on in that small space would be quite astonishing. But for most normal people, this sort of activity just goes on and nobody really cares about it. It's just the way nature works. And hopefully the essence of this video is to bring something which is unusual together. It's not often I find giant green prey mantises. It was a fluke find for me. I could find plenty of redback spiders because our place is totally infested with them. And of course, I'm going to be curious, can a redback spider kill a giant green prey mantis? Well, yes, you know what I can say to you right now is yes, they can. And that totally flies in the face of the same question I asked when I previewed this video. Which one would win the battle? I think 99.9% .9 of people said, oh, the prey mantis will win. Well, it didn't happen like that, did it? So maybe the lesson in life here is always expect the unexpected.